In this lesson, we'll discuss how to perform write operations in MongoDB, the C and U in create, read, update, and delete. The first method we'll talk about is insert one. Insert one inserts one document into the database. Here, I'm performing some global setup and teardown. Let's insert a document with the title of Fortnite and the year of 2018. When we insert a document, we get an insert one write op result. Now, that's a mouthful, but don't be worried. One of the useful properties is result on this object. And in the result object, we have two keys that we need to pay attention to, N and OK. N is the total number of documents inserted, and OK means the database responded that the command executed correctly. Here, I'm peeling off N and OK using object destructuring from the insert.result object. And then I expect N and OK to equal 1 and OK 1 because I am inserting one document. The insert result also contains an insert count key, which should be the same as N above. The last property we'll talk about is the inserted ID. If we don't specify an underscore ID when we write to the database, MongoDB will insert one for us and return this to us here. So here I'm expecting that the insert result dot inserted ID won't be undefined and I'm logging out the inserted ID that was given to the document we wrote. Here, let's ensure that we can find the document we just inserted with the inserted ID we received. So I specify that the title and year are the result of the object when we find one with the underscore ID of the returned ID that we just got. And I expect that the title and year should equal Fortnite and 2018. Our tests are passing, and here we can see the inserted ID that was assigned to the object we wrote. What if we tried to insert a document with the same underscore ID? Here we're going to try and insert a document with the same underscore ID, but a different title in a year. We put this in a try and catch the error, and we'll expect E to not be undefined. We do expect an error and we expect the error message to contain the error code E11000 duplicate key error. Let's check this out. All the assertions passed for our first test so we know that insert1 is working correctly. Now, the insert1 method is useful, but what if we want to insert more than one document at a time? The preferred method for that is insert many. Here, I've defined an array of years correlating to the year of release for Mega Man games. And here, I'm mapping over that array and creating a document where we get the title and the year. So let's insert these results into the database here. Now, just like insert one, we'll get a result object back that has information like the number of documents inserted and the inserted underscore IDs. We also expect that the insert result dot inserted IDs should have 10 values. Let's go ahead and log those out and see what they were. Great, I can see all of the underscore IDs that were automatically created for us by MongoDB. Inserting is a very useful write operation, but it's also very simple. It inserts new data into the database without regard for what the new data is or what's already in the database as long as we don't specify a duplicate underscore ID or some other value that has a unique index on it. So what happens if we want to insert a document but we're not sure if it's already in the database? We could issue a find and check to see if it's there, but that's inefficient when we have the ability to upsert. This here is an upsert. We use the update method instead of the insert method. The first argument to update is the query. So we're going to look to update a document where the title is Call of Duty. This portion here is the update itself, where we set title Call of Duty and year 2003. And this is the options document, the third parameter to update. We specified upsert true 
So if the query doesn't find a document to update, it will be written instead as a new document. Now, we've controlled all of the data that's gone into this collection, so we don't expect any documents to have been modified. So here we have an expect that the upsert result.result.nmodified is going to be zero. And scrolling down a little, we'll go ahead and console log out the upserted key of the result object. And that key contains an array that holds an index information and the underscore ID of the upserted or freshly written document. So what if the document existed? Here we have another update operation where we search for a document with the title Call of Duty. We know it was just inserted. This time we'll update the year to 2018. Next year we'll have to update it to 2019 based on the Call of Duty release schedule. Lastly, we'll specify upsert true. Then we'll console log out the result of that update operation and expect the upsert result dot result dot and modified is one. We see a lot of information printed out, but if we scroll up through this output, we can see and modified as one, and there is no upsert key in this object. Upserts are useful, especially when we can make a write operation generic enough that updating or inserting should give the same result to our application. This is how some websites handle sign up and updating a client account within the same operation. So let's summarize. The two idiomatic methods for inserting documents are insert one and insert many. Trying to insert a duplicate ID will fail. And as an alternative to inserting a document, an upsert and an update method can be used instead.